Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Kaysen. With me today, the man who is thoughts become things, Neo Positivity. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. <laughs> Just realizing we probably should have started five minutes ago because we actually had oh. the really good meaty part of the conversation <laughs> yeah. before we even got started. So, all right. Well, better late than never. We got it going. <laughs> this is good. Good. And we we have a wonderful special guest joining us from Kent, Washington, Selinda Wilson. Hello. Is, she's a life coach and, and she's loaded with energy and, and she's also blessing us with the fact that this is her first podcast that she's doing. Yep. I mean, I, I feel special just hey. that you're choosing, you're choosing us to do your first podcast. So Absolutely. congratulations on, on taking the jump. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It's uh it's been a, a very interesting and eye opening journey. And uh, you were talking about imposter syndrome, you know, just having that kind of a quieting or calming that part of things and and moving forward has been um, something that I'm doing and, and it's working. It's working. Definitely. It's a big that's deal. I was, was going to ask you, I'm like, what took you so with the world being what it is and COVID, <laughs> COVID basically shutting down the country? What would possibly make you wait so long? And you know what imposter syndrome is the answer I'm just like, oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. I got no rebuttal for that because yep. that beast lives up here I'm and saying. it's consistent, you know? <laughs> and so yeah, I I'd love to talk more about that. Yeah. And how absolutely. you how you transitioned and worked through that. Absolutely. Well that's a perfect entree. Give us the give us the, the potted biography. Tell us how you got to where you are and where you came from. Yeah, absolutely. So how I got here. Um Obviously, I've, I've always had a desire to help other people, right? Always had that desire to do that. So I got into healthcare and I got into, you know, becoming a professor and doing all these other things. Um, but it wasn't until, <laughs> it, it wasn't until a, a couple of years ago, actually, that I was thinking that I should go in more of a different direction in terms of what would make my life the most fulfilling. Um, mm-hmm. And for me, that is being able to help other people solve their problems. I love to do it. It's something that's easy for me or it comes easy to me. Um, And the fact that I can do it, it just it just brings me joy. And to see them elevate and and rise to whatever, you know, goal or success they need. I love that. So that uh, so how I got to that, I just you know, we all go through this life journey. We think we're supposed to go in one avenue or another. Um, so for a minute, I thought I was supposed to be veering off to business consulting, which I am a business consultant as well. But I realized that I really should be going full fledged with what I really enjoy doing, which is being able to share knowledge and wisdom and help people in this way. So that's and that's great yeah. when you find your passion like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Delicious. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, you know what? I, no, I just wanted to say when I, I, cause I used to be a police officer and helping people has always been my thing. Mm-hmm. Always my whole life. I've always that kindergarten counselor talking people. I've always been the one people come to with their secrets and yeah. good at keeping them and good at giving advice. And so, you know, being a cop and helping people on a daily basis, like saving lives, mm-hmm. um, it felt good, but I knew something was missing. I knew that something was a little bit more and I wouldn't have figured it out if it wasn't for the numbers. You know, my town was just my town. Mm-hmm. I wanted to help the world. I wanted to help 9 billion people as opposed to the 80,000 people in Camden City, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And that's what really made me open up my mind to the possibility of doing something else in my life. So yeah, finding what you love mm-hmm. is great. Mm-hmm. Like you want to be a doctor, that's mm-hmm. great, but mm-hmm. you don't want to be a gastro if you were meant to be a podiatrist. So right, narrow down. Narrow I down. Love how you did that? Yeah, yeah. Everything's a process. People will reach that point when it's their time, right? When you know when it aligns, I believe. So was it? A, I was going to ask: Was it like a super courageous jump transition, or was it something you were able to do easily? Um, it was a courageous jump. So, for example, I went straight from um, teaching as a professor. I was teaching people how to become medical assistants. And um, and then I 
decided that I wanted to go full fledged as a business person, have my own business. So I stopped that in uh, June of 2022 and started my business, but very slowly. <laughs> um, and I, um, like I said, I went into a different avenue, the business consulting, but then was like, you know what? No, there's, you know, I, what is it that I really enjoy doing? I, I listen to a lot of self-help tapes and things like that, but like, what is it that I really want to be doing? It's like, oh, I give great advice N nearly like all the time, right? Like the best in. Go ahead. You could, you could, go ahead. Like, you could do it. I do. I do. I give Put great advice. Horn a little bit. You know? We got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah uh so that's what i enjoy doing I, I i enjoy i just enjoy it i want to do it and i want to do it more and i like your vision see that's another thing that i think stops us is that sometimes like that self-worth for me like not seeing okay how should i say this like my vision only went so far um at first like i was just thinking like oh okay yeah i need now that i'm not a professor now i can become a business consultant and I'll do this, you know, and I'll bring in money and blah, blah, blah. It, but it still wasn't hitting home that I I needed to do something else until it did. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Uh, I want to do a, just a quick aside. One of our listeners in the live stream, Jeffrey, is from Lusaka. And I'm not sure exactly Lusaka. where that is. Yeah. But uh, I know he's from the Northwest. So oh, that's in the Northwest? I, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Lusaka. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how far it is from Kent, but hey, you know, you're, you're in the ah, same state. That's something, right? <laughs> yeah. Lusaka is the capital of Zambia. Oh. Or Zambai. I'm maybe saying it wrong. Z -A -M -B -I -A. Oh. Well, I know Jeffrey is from the Northwest, but maybe he's traveling. I don't know. Okay. Maybe so. <laughs> well, hello. In America. Well, cool. Let me see, because it, it could be different. Okay. Right? Well, then, Jeffrey, the world traveler, thanks for tuning in. This is great. I love it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. And Jeffrey's always on, you know, supporting. So thank you for that, brother. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Jeffrey's a great supporter. No doubt about Wonderful. it. All right. So where would, do you remember that moment where you said, I'm going to do it? <sighs> um, <clears throat> do I remember the moment? Um. Hmm. Yeah, I have some tough questions. Yeah, that is. <laughs> I'm glad for the tough questions. I've been wanting people to ask me questions, and now that they're being asked, let's see if I can get the answers out. Well, you got. It. I'm sure you can. <laughs> um, do I remember that moment? It just all seems so recent to me, you know. Um, switching to becoming a full life solutionist. So that mean, I mean, that could have been the last couple of months, just really getting that together. I mean, I've been working. I've been working diligently, piecing things together and really trying to figure out and be sure of what it is I want to present to people. Um, and so I want to make sure that in everything that I do, that I'm really giving who I am. And that is to show caring and nurturing and all those type of things and to show people also that I'm human too. So I, I don't believe that once you you know, reach certain levels in your, you know, life journey that you're necessarily better or anything like that. But it's, um, it's, uh, I forgot where I was going with that. So the only better is when you're better than the previous better. version of yourself. I'm saying, and That's every day, better. every day. Compare, comparing yourself to other people is a losing battle because there's always someone out there. I'm saying. You know, with the exception of Mike Tyson in his prime, there's always <laughs> someone out there <laughs> who can, who's, you know, so just, that's my whole thing. It's so funny. Every speech I give, I'm like, yo, this is the biggest speech I've ever given before. Mm -hmm. And people hear me say that. And they're like, dude, you always say that. <laughs> and I, I had to, st every time, this is happening to me a lot. People are like, dude, you always say that. And we sit back and I'm like, when you think about it, this is the biggest speech I've ever given before because it's constantly growing. I'm in yeah. a new arena. Right. I'm in something new. And so it's the, it's the law of attraction of me keep on saying it. But I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that I'm not going backwards. It's always yes. a little bit more important because this 
CEO is there who has these opportunities or this group of kids is there. And I've been meaning to get at that group for a while because of what's been going on around them, you know, in the hood or whatever the situation. So Mm -hmm. I love always progress and always try to outdo yourself from yesterday. It's, it's like, it's like, you don't want to use the competitive nature on other people Mm -hmm. at all but you want to use it on yourself every yes. day, every day, every single day, every single day. And I love it. And I, 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 I agree with everything that you're saying like that um, every day. So, I mean, I've got my affirmations. I've got, I mean, the, oh my, oh yeah. I got my, I got my this, vision board, you know, it's lit up <laughs> as soon as you said the word aff- affirmations. Cause you just hit the magic button with that one. Oh yeah. You know, I got my number cards there, you know, I mean, I, I use all the tools I possibly can to keep me encouraged. You know, motivation is fleeting. So sometimes there might be those days where I'm like, oh man, I just really want to, you know, sit down, but I'm like, you know, you only got a couple more things to do. Go ahead, Celinda. I am my biggest coach and I've always been my biggest coach all of my life. Um, and that's also something I want to show people that they can do because I don't know if they really think about like, I mean, do you guys, well, I'm sure, I'm sure you must coach yourselves. Yes. You just said, <laughs> so, I mean, but I don't come across a lot of people that say that they do. They're like, oh, self coach. Maybe because it's, it seems weird to be like, hey, Celinda, go, come on, girl, you got it. You no. got to do You know, but I, I'm a fan of high fiving <laughs> myself, the imagination version of myself. I'm a super fan of it. In my trailer, there's a, a rubber glove hanging from the ceiling that oh, I high five nice. to have a physical aspect to it. Mm-hmm. But circling back to imposter syndrome, uh-huh. that's my self coach. Because you've in football, there was that coach that was inspiring, and there was that coach that was telling you you're a piece of crap, Mm -hmm. like the police academy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Instead of football, I'll use the police academy instead. Mm -hmm. You got the one drill sergeant who makes you feel like you can get up that wall, and then you got the other drill sergeant that's telling you you're a piece of doo doo and you can't get up that wall. Mm -hmm. And imposter syndrome is that mental coach for me. It has been that mental coach for me, and that I've been able to appreciate the ego and the egoic voice that says yeah. you can't and you won't. Cause when it says that, I'm like, Oh, I can't. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Wait and see. And that pushes me further. That pushes mm-hmm. me to get off the sofa when I'm tired. Yeah. You know, or hung over or whatever the situation yeah, whatever. is. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get to those emails. Yeah. Uh, that's that voice. So in the spirit of self coaching, you know, I just want to raise awareness to that negative voice can also be a coach. If you see it that oh, way. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's all about perception. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in. Uh, definitely in other aspects of my life. Definitely, I've seen it as a, a self coach. For my my biggest thing right now is just, um, you know, that voice that tells you, oh, you know, people may not want to hear what you have to say. That 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 used to be that's the negative self coach there that's that one like oh you know they probably don't want to hear what you have to say are you sure you said that right are you that type of thing because that's how I grew up I grew up as a perfectionist right um and I which grew is another up way in, of saying you grew up the way I did beating yourself up every other day yeah I'm saying and being hyper mm-hmm. self-aware I mean there's mm-hmm. <laughs> you know but now it's not as strong as it used to be definitely it's almost like having a faded picture so it's there, but it doesn't stop me. And that's the, that's the great thing. I can, I can see it and say, okay, I know I need to keep going. We're, we're touching you know, on something really important too. So excuse me, Neil, I just something I want to throw in here. There, there's something really important that's coming through on this, which is looking at and knowing yourself well enough to know what drives you and what repels you. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. for Neo, when, when he was describing, he was describing how that voice motivates him. He knows mm-hmm. himself well enough to know when he gets that voice, like, okay, yeah. we're getting it on now. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. You know, now somebody else could have a completely different reaction to that. It just sure. depends on, on how you are with yourself, what your knowledge is of yourself. Yeah. And, and, and that's to me, that's the core of what we're talking about here. How well do you know, even the imposter syndrome thing, that's still how yeah. well do you know yourself? Exactly. Exactly. I, I just think I have, I have a problem with authority okay. and that, and the, that voice because of its consistency, I guess it has an authoritative authoritative role mm-hmm. in my mind. Mm-hmm. So if you tell me no, I'm, I'm not accepting that. Okay. Um, but I I wanted to say this. Growing up, because you said you had that perfectionist in you. Growing mm-hmm. up, I didn't have that. 
I always thought my dad wanted, because I was raised by just my dad, I always thought that he wanted me to have A's. Okay. And I couldn't get A's. Okay. I was, you know, I had the slight dyslexia. I still, I don't know, I've never been diagnosed, but I still think I, I have <laughs> dyslexia. I couldn't get those A's. So even when I got a B, I felt like it wasn't good enough, even though I wasn't getting in trouble for it. And so right. it kind of instilled something in me that, I, that I'm still battling today, which, which is the reason why I wanted to segue into this next part. Before we got on the show, everybody, uh, they, uh, Walt said that this is her first podcast yeah. like, ever. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my goodness, with social media being what it is. And, you know, COVID came and made everybody sit down. And that's when the podcast really exploded. You know, how is this your first one? And her answer was basically imposter syndrome. And I'm like, well, I, I got no rebuttal for that. Like, I got, <laughs> That thing will knock you down. I'm saying. Um, so I, 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 the biggest part I want to get is how you techniques that you used to get over that hump uh mm -hmm. you know because i think that's so important for everybody is to to have as many of these tools on our tool belt as we can have yeah yeah um one of the first tools that i've used is so anytime that i have negative self-talk about me i replace it with something positive so something that you were just saying earlier but place it with something <laughs> positive and immediately because i know i know that it's just i know what it is right so I just replace it with something positive. Oh, nobody wants to hear what you have to say, Celinda. Uh, but I have some really great things to say and somebody does want to hear it. And I'll, I'll do that. I mean, maybe not out loud, but you know, I, I understand that for myself. So that's one technique. If you have negative thought, replace it with something positive. Um, some other things that I use are affirmations. Speaking, you say speaking it into existence, but you're also putting in action, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I'm sorry. Do you guys? Do you guys yeah, I hear it. dogs. I'm so sorry. Should I? Should <laughs> no, I? keep going. Okay. We've had much worse. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking they weren't going to be doing that. But the, 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 this is just part of the ambiance of LOA today. You know, yeah. we have you know kids photobombing the, the video. We yes. have lightning storms. We got what? people being knocked off. We have all kinds of stuff that happens. If it's my just son's here, he comes in at four. Oh, he'll come in right at the end of the show. I mean, like right on time. Oh, okay, okay. Well, okay. Well, then that's great. Um. Yeah, so negative self-talk uh, and replacing it with positive. Yeah, affirmations, definitely very helpful. Anything that's going to help pick me up. So, for example, um, another thing that sometimes I think about is money. You know, I'm creating a business, I'm starting a new business, and then just stopping being a professor and going like that. Yeah, oh, you better. I'm used to being frugal or being you know, very careful with my money, right? Um, but also I'm trying to change my mindset about money, right? Because when you start living in lack like that, it makes it a lot harder for it to, to yeah. gravitate wow. towards you. Yeah. Um, and so, and, I mean- There's a big piece of that too. I, I, don't want to, I want to get on that for a moment here because that's mm -hmm. a really important topic you're bringing up there. The, yeah. the tendency that people have, and I certainly have had this tendency to be overly frugal. And by overly frugal, what I mean is, like, I can give you an example directly. I, I run a, a, a gardening service and maintenance business. Okay. And right now I have an advertising opportunity. Now, I, I, I do a lot of advertising this time of year. We're just opening for the season, so we're getting yeah. the word out and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. But I have this one advertising opportunity. And you can price-wise, compared to the others, it's really expensive compared okay. to the others. And there's a, like a five month commitment on it. It's not like, you know, try it for a month or two and see if you like it. It's, you know, minimum five months. So you're spending, yeah. I think it's like a $2,500 investment for this little thing that circulates in the area. Okay. And, and my initial reaction was, oh, that's too much money. And then I stopped and reminded myself, first of all, I noticed it. That was a big deal. Just noticing mm -hmm. that I was doing it. Oh, mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. after I noticed that I was doing it, I stopped and I said to myself, okay, so what does that actually add up to? Mm -hmm. But what it adds up to is if we get one good sized job, that pays for all five months. Mm -hmm. So if we get two good sized jobs, we just won. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I turned it around in my mind. Mm -hmm. But up until that moment, I was scared to death of that moment. Yeah. Yeah. You already won because these are first world problems. <laughs> you don't have these problems in third world countries. You Absolutely know. true. No, I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's, you got to jump on top of that. You got to jump. But 
wrapping, like putting all everything both of you guys said into perspective. You got mm-hmm. the affirmations, mm-hmm. you've got the changing the wording, mm-hmm. and you've got all this stuff on your bat belt. Mm-hmm. The problem is remembering to use the bat belt. Yes. Oh yeah. When the thought is coming, like you got all these, I'm gonna but something has to wake you up from that thought and say, let me shift my thought process. Let me do mm-hmm. an affirmation. Let mm-hmm. me say something else, change mm-hmm. up this narrative. If you're not in tune, if you're not aware enough to stop mm-hmm. that thought in its tracks, you're not going to get to affirmations and all those other things. And so I want to challenge both of you. How do you get there? What are the mental exercises that you teach or train people on to get them to wake up to even do these other exercises? Introspection, uh, reflection activities, journaling, all those are great activities to center yourself and to reflect on what's going on in your head because we are, you know, we have to think about the thoughts that we have. That's very important. It's like a, what I heard before, it's like your mind is like a garden and you're the gardener. Mm-hmm. And um, you basically are going to make sure that whatever thoughts you're having are going to be thoughts that are going to be beneficial for you and moving you forward. Um, creating a plan. For me, it was just creating a plan, realizing where I want to be and what things do I have to do. OK, well, then setting up, OK, this is what I'm going to do every morning. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to look at my affirmations. I'm going to stretch in yoga and what I'll, whatever I set out. So just creating a plan. They are extra barky today. They really, <laughs> they knew well, it. They thought they were invited to be on the podcast, so they're just contributing. Yeah. If they were in a room, they wouldn't say anything. They'd just be walking around. <laughs> I was saying, I was saying, gee. Um, what kind of dogs they sound huge. <laughs> they are huge. They are Labrador and Great Pyrenees mix. Oh, boy, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good size yeah. dog. Oh, yeah. Very oh, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're big. <laughs> they're cute. All they want to do is get on the mic. I'm saying, I'm saying, my goodness, watch, they'll be quiet once, (laughs) but, um, no, so I, I, I want to back you out a little bit because those two answers were great, but you've got to wake up to do both of those. Yeah. So if you have someone who's not in tune with themselves and just wants to get started with the law of attraction, they could go days without remembering to do any of these exercises. True. So you got to have something and that's, and this is something I'm still working on too. But one of the first things I I coach people on is Mm -hmm. practicing waking up. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. it. I want you to wake up as many times as you can today and tell me how many you did and then do it tomorrow and tell me how how many you did tomorrow. And Mm -hmm. I usually get an answer like four or five on day one and one or two on day two because it's starting to fade. It's starting to fade away that fast because it's something they're not used to doing. And it's difficult to remember to remember to do these things with Mm -hmm. the rat race of life. But the more you do this, uh-huh. the better you get at it. Your brain is a ha- muscle, it has muscle memory. Your brain will start to wake you up throughout the day. Uh-huh. And then that's when you start to implement all these other exercises that we were just talking about. So practicing waking up to me is like one of the most critical things you can do. Otherwise, all these mental exercises you got written down, uh-huh. they're not even getting done. And if yeah. you have a spouse that can remind you, can accountability partner, you remind each other. Like, hey, have you done mental check-ins today? How many have you done? Are your thoughts mm-hmm. serving you today? Like, I'm huge on accountability partners. So, yeah, that would okay. be my answer for that. Lovely. Lo- well, yeah. The pressure well, there's on. also, there's also <laughs> one that's built into life that we kind of, we, we tend to skip over it. I like those. Yeah. The one that's built into life is we live a, in a world of polarity and contrast. Of course. Where, uh-huh. you know, not everything goes the way we want it to. That's true. Now, we, we can treat those negative so-called experiences as just negative things to be avoided. But there's also the fact that every time that I, I zero in on something and say, I really don't like that, mm-hmm. it's a cue that life is handing me. Okay, you don't like that. What do you like instead? Right. So life is <laughs> cueing me to come up with an answer. Now, I can just refuse to answer. I can just try to blank it out, you know, so mm-hmm. it won't serve me if I do that. But if I'm willing to treat that, as the universe tapping me on the shoulder, mm-hmm. it's built in. I don't yeah. have to remember anything. It's just yeah. telling me right there. Okay, here you go. Some negativity again. You ask for some negativity. Well, no, 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 no. I don't want negativity. That's the wake up process right there. Oh, I, love it. I, use, I use body pain for that. Like if, I, if I'm <laughs> just sitting there and my neck just starts hurting, mm-hmm. I use that as a wake up call to do an affirmation or something. Oh. So physical indicators, I love them. Ah, oh, that's very interesting. I never, I haven't thought about doing that or thinking, 
if I feel a pain, do an affirmation. So what type of affirmation would you say at that point? It all depends. Mm-hmm. Like I have this poker chip right here that uh-huh. I keep in my pocket. Uh-huh. It just says thank you on it, and that's my backup. If okay. I can't think of anything, I'll just say thank you 10 times. But I always am like, okay, what's my next goal? The problem is, and, and if I if I have a next goal of, uh, let's say, booking this gig, mm-hmm. I say an affirmation like, I'm so happy and thankful that I booked that last gig or I got paid $25 to speak for an hour here. I say an affirmation like that about something in the past to produce it again in the future. But more often than not, I go, okay, what do I want to be thankful for? Do it. Is it this? Is it that? Is it that? Is it that? Oh no, I got to get milk on the way home and I'm gone. I didn't forgot to do the whole exercise. And so that's the problem. I just, that's when you just revert back to thank you, as opposed to looking for that thing. If you can't find it in three seconds, mm-hmm. just say thank you 10 times. So that's, that's or yes, oh, yes, yes. 10 times. that's a great go-to. By the way, there's, a, there's also an ancillary thing that goes along with the thing I mentioned before, where mm-hmm. the universe, you know, sends you signals based on what you don't like and it's your opportunity to notice it. Uh-huh. That is, the universe is persistent. Okay. I mean, like when you focus on something, it doesn't just deliver one of them to you. Mm-hmm. There is one and then another one and, and, and it gets progressively stronger each time. So the first time it's a little tap on the shoulder and the second time is a little punch on the shoulder. And the third time mm-hmm. it's giving you a push and the fourth time it's a two by four to the side of the head. It just keeps going and going until finally you say, okay, okay, I'm noticing, I'm noticing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I get it. Chill. It's starting to hurt. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Yep, that's it. Something I'd like to say about that is like, even, even for me right now, um, <laughs> that, that nagging voice, or not really a nagging voice, that, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought again. I don't know if it's because I'm a little bit nervous, but not so nervous. It's your first <laughs> podcast. It happens. Ah, breathe, Solinda. It's fine. Walt, say um, something. Who's your change? Just, just, just remember what here. I told you before we Always got started. back as soon as you leave. Yeah. But, uh, well, I told you about how our first podcast episode went. We we, we yeah. did the first 20 minutes and then found out that the recording wasn't working. Yeah, so, I know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, I just... I, I'm pretty sure that's how my first one went, too. Is that right? <laughs> Everyone has done a whole, at least one whole episode. In oh, yeah. Either the oh, mic yeah. wasn't plugged in. Yeah. Or you weren't live streaming or the title was wrong. Yeah. Um, it's a rite of yeah. passage, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. I thought, I thought about it. I thought about it too. Um, and then stillness. Well, then we'll that's all right. We'll we'll shift we'll shift topics because that. Oh we, my gosh! If we, we just take our mind back. off and go somewhere else, it'll come it back. It does. Too. <laughs> okay. yeah. there you go. So don't worry about that. Let, let's 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 go to. Uh, we started with the, this idea of, of what affirmations we like to to hone in on, but what are some of the other tools in the toolbox? Because there, mm-hmm. I mean, affirmations is a good one, but it's not the only one. No, I mean, there are a lot. Um, So I mentioned that. I mentioned journaling. I'm not really much of a journal. You know, I I don't write in a journal, uh, but I have in my past. um, And I think it's beneficial for getting your ideas out and um, getting to learn more about yourself. I think there are certain questions that you can ask yourself. And honestly, some people don't know what questions to to ask. Like, where do I start? Where do I start with my journey? Another tool then they can use that I would suggest is an awareness tool, um, such as almost like meditation, but not quite. Um, you're basically, I would tell them to, you know, find a nice, comfortable, you know, sitting spot and to close their eyes and just breathe, right? They can do deep breaths or they can breathe regularly. And as they're breathing and their eyes are closed, I just want them to listen. You're just listening to whatever's in your environment. It can be, you know, preferably not with the TV or radio on, but just listening to the clock, listening to everything around you, but not assigning a label to it because then that just, you know, that defeats the purpose. You're just listening with curiosity. Um, even if it's children you hear down the street or the car coming up the hill, right? right. Um, yeah, and then let it happen. Yeah, you right. Add because a dialogue to it, you start. Okay, well, whose car is that, and where are they going? And yeah, you <laughs> right. gotta let it. Ha- you, you just you gotta let it happen. The observer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's so beautiful too when you just realize all of these things that are happening. This is life. Like I just, I it makes me excited when I think about it. It's like, well, yeah, this is life happening. The birds chirping and all that. Um, and then the second part of that is to bring the attention inward. Um, so, what thoughts am I thinking? And just 
just paying attention to whatever comes across your mind. You could be thinking about work or anything else and just not to really interact with it, but allow it to flow through your mind. If you get to the point where if you know you run out of things to think of, then you're probably really towards more towards uh, a deeper meditation. But you can you can actually I mean, I, I don't think there are you know, concrete rules on how to get to a level of meditation. And I don't think there's any one way to, you know, strike a balance and become more aware. I mean, just have to try different things out. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Yeah. And and a lot of that's based on what we've been through in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, certain things will calm Walt that don't calm me and vice versa. Uh, So, yeah. And that's what it's about getting into that calm state. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people come home from a crazy busy day of work mm-hmm. that I know and they the house is empty. Mm-hmm. The, the kids aren't running around. They have mm-hmm. that time to meditate. But when they try, their brain is just going rah, 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 like, a you know, like a projector just flashes and memories all throughout the day. When they end one subject about work, it takes them to the next subject about how mm-hmm. the car almost broke down at the red light. And what they're going to do about that. And then the next, they cancel that and it takes them to their finances and they just, they can't, they, they, I'm not going to say they can't do it, but they can't do it. (laughs) I got to get out of this chair. Like I, let me go do something and focus on something because I don't like this dialogue that's going on up here. And it makes them not want to meditate. Yeah. When in, when in, in turn, that's the answer to getting, solving all that. Cause once you get calm about it, Mm -hmm. the universe will adjust around you and make those situations, situations that are calm. Absolutely. By removing Absolutely. the problems and, and resistance, I guess I should say. I think resistance is a big one. Resistance. Yes, it is. And I want to add to that, too. If if someone were to come to me in re- with that issue of not being able to meditate because their mind is constantly racing, I would say it's okay to let your mind race. Mm-hmm. But then also institute using a journal. Write down what those thoughts were. What are the most pressing thoughts that you had? And then start using certain questions. Well, why is it that I'm, what is it that bothers me about this certain situation that I'm thinking about? Because you have to start getting down to the root of, you know, the root of the problem. Like, what is the, what is the, why are you having these thoughts? What do you need to do? It's really just asking yourself, what do I need to do to make this better for myself? That's what I do. Is what do I need to do to make this better for myself? And it could be anything like, okay, well, maybe I could think about it in a different way. Maybe I'm not. You know, I mean, it could be anything, really, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah. You know, coming into that situation, a lot of people are upset and mad yeah. that their mind is racing. Yeah. And it's like, that's what it's been it's doing just- for 45 years now. Yeah. You expect it to just stop? It's like shooting a BB gun at a freight train. You're not even going to come close to stopping it right mm-hmm. now. So don't be mad at it for doing what it's doing. Just like don't be mad at the ego for shooting you down and kicking in your thoughts and kicking in your negative, you know, throwing negative connotations at you. The ego yeah. has kept you alive. Yeah. It's paranoia has kept you from trying to hurry up and make a left at the yellow light. Yeah. You know, so you have to not hate these things because they're a part of you. It's and a balance. To hate you manifests more reasons to hate you. So you, you, you got to find a way over this hump. You have it's- to. It's, it's not even getting over the hump. It's part of the process. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's totally normal. I mean, when I first started meditating, yeah, my, my brain was racing with all sorts of thoughts, whether they were positive or negative. It was just, it was just going, right? But it's about being able to control your mind at some point, right? And that just takes time. So it's not something that happens overnight. It really, it, it just takes time. And when people understand that, I think, um, and when they know it's okay that your mind was racing this time, maybe it's been racing for the past 30 days that you've tried to meditate every single time it's been racing, but you'll probably notice that you're able to control it a little bit more and a little bit mm-hmm. more. So it's just, that you muscle know, memory. Yeah. You know, I, I want to give you a, a secret. Yeah. A little tip I got. Okay. <laughs> I first saw the movie, the secret March 10th. I think it was uh-huh. March 11th of 2008. Mm-hmm. And I knew immediately that I was going to have to learn how to meditate because okay. I had to get this under wraps in order to get this under wraps. Okay. And so I tried and tried and tried and I would sit there like, why is there so many thoughts? Mind you, I'm a police officer in the most dangerous city in America. I'm on a SWAT mm-hmm. team, foot chase, car chase every day, every- guns, all kind every day. So my mind is just going a mile a minute and I'm like, why stop? Why is it done? 
So I never forget on day 16, mm-hmm. I went, something clicked in my head mm-hmm. and I went back to the movie, The Secret. When the guy mm-hmm. said, I'm so happy and thankful that, mm-hmm. and I said, you know what? Let me use that. I'm so happy and thankful that I'm good at meditating. I'm so happy and thankful that I enjoy meditating. Mm-hmm. And I got real like not borderline obsessed with using that affirmation with meditation. Mm-hmm. And literally that next day, it was it. Meditation wow. has been one of my favorite things to do in life since the next day after I implemented that. And that's why I've always said that is my greatest cheat sheet to everything. Anything you want in life, just picture you already have it. And mm-hmm. just add, I'm so thankful. I'm so happy and thankful that I have, or, and, and you're there. So Absolutely. that is a huge one. You please use that for your clients. I want everybody meditating, and it is one of the most difficult things to get into. It is difficult. You've never done it before. Yeah, it is difficult. And, and I like that too. I mean, affirmations is just a way of keeping your mind focused on what it is that you want, right? Um, and that's how I use it. I use it anytime that I have those negative thoughts or something like that. I'll use affirmations. I'll use any positive words of encouragement so I can keep focused because I know that this, there's something I'm, I need to do. Um, even, you know, people, trinkets and charms, if people have certain, have assigned certain meanings to them, it actually can help boost um, that positivity for them. For example, mm-hmm. I have these beckoning cats over here, you know, the cats with the paw up like this. And it symbolizes money flows in, right? <laughs> well, whether you believe it or not, but you can actually get your mind to believe it, right? So if I want to believe that this is, this says money flows in, then yeah, you know, money flows in, money flows in, you know, and just whatever, use whatever helps bring you or pushes you forward to where, where you're trying to go, really. Which means search for yeah. what else, what, what pushes you forward because yeah. it's not just going to fall on your lap it's and not. you can't just buy a bunch of things that work for other people. Yeah. Buying, same thing with wording your affirmation. You have to word it for mm-hmm. you. Affirmation mm-hmm. might not work for Walt. That works for me. Right. Um, and, and the most important thing about affirmations that I really try to drive home from everybody affirmations don't create the change in your life. You can't just say I'm rich over and over and over again. Affirmations help you shift your expectations. Mm -hmm. You will always get what you truly expect deep down, buried in your subconscious, which we cannot access, you know? So affirmations help you shift your expectations on what you Mm -hmm. expect. You could say I'm rich all day long, but if you don't expect it to ever happen because you never know what it was like to be rich, it's not never going to (laughs) happen. Yeah. So the point of these affirmations is to shift your internals. That's right. So you, that's why feeling them is so important. Saying that's something right. 10 times, not going to do nothing, but feeling it, got to feel it. Got to feel it. And, and you got to put action. Got to have action too. Expectations. Yeah. They have to be in congruence. A couple of thoughts came to my mind as you guys were, were talking there. I love the stuff that you were talking about there. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that came to my mind was uh, you, you, uh, a, a perfect example of how perspectives are very, very different and how valuable those different perspectives are and how they impact us on a day-to-day basis. Because, Neil, you, you mentioned that you watched The Secret for the first time on March 11, 2008. Well, that's remarkable on a couple of bases. First of all, that you know what the date was. And mm-hmm. second of all, that's the date my dad passed. We had two entirely different experiences on March 11, 2008. The same oh, day, like same year? Day. That was the day and year that my dad passed. Yeah. Wow. Holy crap. So, so, so I mean, there, now yeah. you were at that point, uh, on that particular day and time, you were getting exposed to something that was opening your, your mind to something mm-hmm. really radically different and exciting. Mm-hmm. And okay. you, know, you were getting enthusiastic and figuring out how to apply it. Mm-hmm. And I was breathing a sigh of relief because I, had, I, this was really strange, but I'd done all my mourning before my dad died. My dad died from um, symptoms related to Parkinson's, which is a really horrible way to yeah. go. So when he passed, we were all actually pretty relieved about it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, was on the, I was in a very strange place where I, I didn't know that you could actually do your grieving before an event. And I'm sitting on the other side and I said, well, why am I not feeling any grief? So I was in an entirely different space mm-hmm. from the one you were in. Mm-hmm. The same date, two entirely different experiences going on. Yeah. It's a great reminder. We are all experiencing very, very different things in the same way. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. crazy. And then here absolutely. we are. 
Here and then the other thing that was coming to my mind, we were, you, were, you guys were talking earlier, um, Neil, I think you in particular made reference to how uh, you, you don't want to be allowing your mind to go off into creating scenarios that are working against you. You just want to be in that right. observing mode. And Slinda, you were really zeroing in on that too. Um, there's an example of that that comes from a science fiction author, one of the original science fiction authors named mm-hmm. Robert Heinlein. He created a character, but it's also a series of characters or, or a, a category of character, if you will. Mm-hmm. It, it was a career choice that doesn't actually exist, exist in our real world, but it existed in his world. Mm-hmm. That it, it was a career choice of being what they call a, what he called a fair witness. Okay. A fair witness is somebody who is usually hired um, as a, as like a, an expert witness in a, in a criminal trial or something like that. But it could be also in a corporate negotiation or it could be in al- almost any kind of, of situation where there needs to be some kind of a neutral observer kind of a thing. And a, a fair witness was trained in his world to essentially only report on the actual evidentiary stuff that's in front of them without judgment, without inferring where it could be going without mm-hmm. you know, playing it out in their mind. Just here's what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it created a very interesting kind of character because when the when somebody who was a fair witness was a character p- participating in a dialogue or in, a, in an experience or an event that was going on, mm-hmm. and they were doing it cloaked, meaning they, they would wear a cloak that would be, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm playing my fair witness role. Mm-hmm. They'd be asked a question about, what was going on behind the scenes and they'd like stop and they'd say, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes. I can't answer that. I can only tell you what was going on in front of the scenes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That yeah. Really, that, yeah. that ties in directly. Well, it's, it's literally just being willing to say, I don't know what's over there. I'm not going to project. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not yeah. going to try to create something. This is all I can see is what's going yeah. on right now in front of me. And I can't t- give testimony to anything else. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's crazy when, as you talk, I'm just thinking, that would be extremely hard to do. Yeah. And then when I think about meditating, it's, mm-hmm. it's extremely hard to do sometimes. So, yeah. 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 Cuz that damn, you really put that in perspective with that. <laughs> That's what was coming to me when you guys were talking. I said, "My god, it's right out of a Heinlein novel." <laughs> yeah. Cuz kind of, in essence, that's what a jury is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah. Not care about anything. This guy could have been a serial killer. You're not supposed to take that into account. Nothing mm-hmm. before what happened with this incident. Right. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to just look at the facts and, mm. you know, you're sitting there and you're trying to meditate and you're looking at those thoughts coming at you like, hmm, that's just what's happening with no judgment. Cause you know, it's people we judge. Right. Yeah. You know, you see a chair, you're like, I fell in a chair like that once. <laughs> you, know, you just walk into the room and you start judging things like, is that water cold or is it lukewarm? How long has it been on the counter? You just start judging things in accordance with how you like things. And so when you see these scenarios, important scenarios about your life, your inner life that no one else even knows about, you know, your mm-hmm. thoughts, it's hard to not latch on to them and, and give some kind of answer, some kind of commentary. Yeah. But that's what's necessary. Yeah. Well, you, you, in, your, in what you just said, you actually took two pieces of one of my most recent favorite, favorite phrases and, and, and kind of separated them, but they're all part of the same thought. Um, it was uh, a phrase that was popularized in the, in the Apple TV series, Ted Lasso. <clears throat> Excuse me. The phrase is, be curious, not judgmental. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Basically saying, any of those situations where you want to be judgmental, turn off the judgmentalism. Just be curious. What can you yeah. learn about what's going on? Yeah. I think about that with introspection, like you're not, you know, when you start thinking about the idea, the thoughts that you have or behaviors or characteristics or anything about you, it's not to beat yourself up. You're mm. you're looking into yourself with curiosity as a learner um, mm. so that you can learn how to recognize uh, what things that need to be changed or, or yeah. whatever. Right. So, yeah, definitely. I agree. You know, you pose a good point right there because in meditation, I don't want anybody to go into meditation thinking they just have to be still for 30 yeah. minutes. You could shoo away 20 thoughts and then one, you can ask the question, hmm, like you said, curious, why did I think that just now? And then explore it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not, not mm-hmm. only is there nothing wrong with that, but you're going to learn That's something. A good idea. You're going to learn something that no one outside of you could have taught you. No right. book, no teacher, your spouse, mm-hmm. your, no one could have taught you that but you and that internal greater you. So 
and do be curious and entertain some of these ideas. Some of them are stupid, like I got to get eggs on my way home. But if you think about your neighbor and you're like, oh, man, he got that Lexus and I'm driving a you stop and entertain that. Why am I upset about him having a Lexus? He didn't do nothing. That's right. That's what you do. You know, do I need a Lexus? If if I went to the dealership, I wouldn't even buy a Lexus. If I had the amount of money that it took to get a Lexus, I would get something else. You know, and so you start to, and then you, it's, it no, you no longer start to think things like that before. And if not for nothing, if you don't learn anything about yourself, you're not, you don't care about that Lexus no more. So when he drives home every day, it's a little bit less animosity, mm-hmm. jealousy, feeling of <laughs> lack. So yeah, get into mm-hmm. it. Get, I love yeah. how you said that. Get curious with some of these thoughts and ask yourself, you know, why am I even thinking that? Can you get yeah. some funny answers? Yeah. You'll see, so, you'll be like, yo, I'm silly. Why I be thinking stuff like that? So yeah, it's, it's all around and great practice. There's so many things you can do with it. Great practice. You said it. So I mean, people could just start off with doing that exercise, which I just call self-reflection. You know, I reflect on my day. How did I do today? How was my interaction with people today? Um, that's a great way to learn about yourself too. Just review your day. How, how was it? You know, what were the, the pain points? If there were pain points, why were they pain points? And, and working through that. I mean, it's a great way to get to know yourself, definitely. Um, I've come it. up with my next five reels off of this episode. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes. That's good. Neil is, Neil is well known for, t- for taking notes on everything, including all these episodes that he does, <laughs> all the summits that he does, everything he participates in. He's t- he's like the consummate note taker. Wonderful. Oddly yeah, enough, in the last, I'd say the last, most of the episodes this year, I wasn't taking notes. I was just engulfed in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess our talk today was just so good that I know these are things that people need to hear. Like everybody needs to hear all that, all the episodes we say, but certain things like that whole jealousy thing with it, I wrote that down. I need to do mm-hmm. a reel about that, mm-hmm. you know, and not the jealousy aspect of it, but the whole meditation and mm-hmm. ask a question like, why did yeah. I think? You yeah. know, and, and be loose with it. Don't be, yeah. I'm going to have no thoughts for the next 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> you know, no, be loose with it. Be okay with it. And if mm-hmm. the thoughts are coming 60,000, they're just coming at you constantly. Don't be upset with it. Give yourself a time you limit. What's happening. You can't yeah. become a monk guru overnight. It's just not going to happen. So, so yeah. I'm you to something really it. important. The purpose of meditation is to get to know yourself. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I've been meditating oh. for years. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Most people will say it's because you're supposed to quiet your mind, but really that's just another way of saying getting to know yourself because you're I trying know. to reconnect. Introspection. Absolutely. I about that. Absolutely. I've always thought it was just to practice quieting your mind so that in the daytime or in a critical incident, you're better at being able to quiet your mind and get to that peaceful state, which opens which is up great. your mind to suggestions yeah. and stuff. But yeah, I never even looked at it like that. Yeah, because yeah. well, you ask the question to be curious. You ask the question, well, why do I need to quiet my mind? Mm-hmm. That's and the answer is to you're it. basically trying to strengthen that internal connection, get to know yeah. yourself better, get better, get into alignment with yourself, with your, get inner, into child, your inner being. Yeah, Ex- absolutely. And that, is huge. that makes me think of a uh, balance as well. I mean, people, I think people think that there's one way to be balanced, but balance is going to be different for every single person, right? Mm-hmm. Balance for me might be working 12 hour shift and doing this, this, and that. That might be balance for me, but what's balance for you it might be, you know, meditating three times a day. And, you know, I mean, so everybody being able to find their own balance and how you do that, meditate, ask yourself questions, ask yourself questions, be your own. I don't want to say be your own therapist, but you can be, you can ask your own questions and get to the root of it oh yeah you, if you're quiet and you ask a question and wait and then listen for the answer and you're able mm-hmm. to distinguish your answer from the universe's answers mm-hmm. from the ego's answer mm-hmm. you will get so much more i like most of the information i've gotten was from that most of mm-hmm. my mental exercises no i didn't get them from books i got them from asking questions Ask and questions. getting solid answers that just made sense yeah like and i don't take credit for none of that i'm not smart enough to come up with some of the stuff that comes to me mm-hmm. that's somewhere else and you know recognizing that is you know is another thing too your yeah. connection with source and that the yeah. information is readily available readily to you available. at all times mm-hmm. i don't believe in writer's block i can't i don't it just doesn't make sense to me i've never mm-hmm. been able to tap to not tap in mm-hmm. yeah i think and, and it's one more thing that i want to say too is that um i think 
that it's uh, I, I'm gonna get over this hump. You watch gotcha again. <laughs> <laughs> this is self development in action. I'm telling you, like I am you know Look, when you tee it up and you're like, listen, give me the mic for the next thirty seconds. <laughs> oh man, what the heck? You know. That's really like what it is. It's like, oh freeze. Oh gosh. Um uh, with practice. With practice. practice. That's through. right. That's uh, I will say this though. A lot of people consider themselves enlightened and I, and there's a reality check that needs to happen. Yeah. Enlightenment isn't like a black belt. It's not something you get and it's yours forever. Enlightenment mm-hmm. is a state of mind. Yeah. And you could pop right out of as fast as you got into it. Thank and it's you. a state of mind that is harder to hold on to. Like meditation and clearing your mind, it's harder to hold on to because you got the doorbell ringing and the Amazon package is here. And last time they delivered it, it was broke. So you hope it's better this time. You got all these different things that are going on around you. Dogs barking. The neighbor just started his lawnmower mm-hmm. while I'm trying to do a live stream. Mm-hmm. It's harder to stay in line. You know, so for those who just consider themselves enlightened, you need a reality check. This is effort that's going to take every day of your life. Like jogging. If you stop, you're going to get bad at it. Yeah. So, once you commit to that effort and you commit to doing that work forever, yeah, then you really start to open your life to you know other things a lot that all those things that come with alignment with the meditation and spirituality you mm-hmm. mentioned earlier, going outside or just me, I'll go outside in between every email and I look mm-hmm. up at the trees. My neighbors probably think I'm crazy, mm-hmm. but I get this sense of peace and appreciation for life mm-hmm. as soon as I do that, and when you get still, mm-hmm. you hate to find that, yeah. You get still, and most a lot of people don't, because when they get still, their brain is just. Of course, of course. I will stare at some nature. I always say you could take the biggest thug on the planet to the Grand Canyon, and when mm-hmm. he first, he's going to pause for a second. Mm-hmm. He's going to pause for of a course. second. And that's the same thing I experience when I go outside and stare at the trees because yeah. I meditate. Before I yeah. meditated, when I stared at the trees, I was like, yeah. "What is that?" I'm right? <laughs> I picked something I didn't like about it. <laughs> so it's just so many different benefits to this. That could yeah. be blocked if you just consider yourself enlightened for the rest of life. Like, yeah. nah, this is a work in progress. Keep going. Yeah, because I think there's a misconception that enlightenment, once you're there, you're at the top and you get, you know. Then you're no. looking down on other people who aren't enlightened. No. Yeah, yeah. no, like no. It's a state of mind. Still, still human. <laughs> still, you know, still human. You're still going to have things, but it's just how you are able to think about them. There's a couple of thoughts I want to bring together that you expressed, yeah. Linda. You were talking a few moments ago about journaling and the power of journaling. Yeah. And you were also talking about um, the importance of that ability that we all have to be self-therapeutic. Mm-hmm. And I combine the two together because like you, you mentioned earlier, you did, you're not really a big fan of doing a lot of journaling. I was yeah. never for the longest time much yeah. into journaling until one time I got involved in um, a self-development thing called the Thai Boot Camp, which listeners know about. And in the Thai Boot Camp, you are expected to do some journaling. So I said, okay, I'll do some journaling. And yeah. it was a real trial and so forth. But one of the things that they want you to do in that boot camp is to dig into uh, what they call transgressors, things from your, your earliest years that have mm-hmm. carried on and affected you in a negative way mm-hmm. throughout your life and, and to work through them. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, journaling, that's the one real value I found for journaling for me is using it to do that self-therapy, to just dig right into that stuff and, and express it, get it all out. Yeah. There's nothing like getting all that on paper because when agree. you do, it becomes clear in a way that it was never clear before. Uh-huh. And then yeah. when you look back, do you ever look back at those journals? You ever look back at your journal to see not where you often, are? Not often, actually. No. I usually, I mean, I have it on occasion, but it's not a normal thing for me. It's more like once I get it expressed that way, and I have the clarity, I don't need to look back because I have the no. clarity. No, you definitely don't need to look back. But sometimes yeah. it's interesting to look back and say, yeah. "Wow, yeah, I see, I can see the pattern, or can see." the steps that I've taken to get where I am. I mean, you don't really need the journal to do that, but it's just sometimes more motivating to see where you've come. It's a great reminder. Yeah. I I don't, I didn't journal until um, I'd say a matter of fact, 65 journal entries um, is is where I'm at with it. And it's one one each day. Um, It's not so much journaling. It's, it's more lists. I am this, I do that. Life is great. Why do I attract? such great people, um, lofty questions. Okay. It's more like that. But every now and then I do go back 
you know, to two months ago, mm-hmm. just where my head was at. Like, yo, yeah. what did I have? Like, oh my God, I accomplished that. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, so it is, it is, it is dope to go back and like uh, see where your head was at. If that's the kind of journal that you were, you know, you were doing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, 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 I cycle through these uh, steps. I'll, I'll just show you real quick. I cycle through every now and then I'll have, I take a, a cue card and I'll write my best mental exercises on them that okay. I had whether okay. it be saying I deserve 10 times, but they're constantly upgrading through the books. And this okay. is a, this is the whole stack of them right here, but I'll just go back and I'll pull one out and this will tell me what mental exercises I was working on. What? And I got the date. Like this is from 11, 21, 17, November 1st, wow. 2017. And um, yeah. I like that. I like that idea so much. Another one. <laughs> another one was an affirmation I was using here. Uh-huh. Like Jay Khaled, yes. another one. Like when you get a victory, like another one. Another That's one. one Manifesting your future. Yeah. Say another one. So another yeah. Another one. Ooh, I love it. That's a great cards. idea. And <laughs> uh, making energy payments and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I always always look back on these every now and then just mm-hmm. to see some old. And then, and you know, I'll see an exercise that I haven't done in two years that I'm like, oh, I need to bring that back. Yeah. You know. So yeah. yeah it, 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 looking back every now and then can be very beneficial yeah i love how you have a nice container just holding all of that there i should do something like that too i'm not a journaler but i definitely would write down on a you know three by five card and then file it away like that and probably use it i gotta i gotta get back into it it's been a while since i've done that and i usually just keep it in my pocket and when i Mm -hmm. feel it i'm like ooh, and i'll do Mm -hmm. one of the you know one of the mental exercises yeah that thing the same thing i use the the poker chip for i just feel it remember it's there and do an exercise and do it. Mm-hmm. i love it wow <laughs> as usual we're having one of these discussions where the energy just flows and that's exactly what's been happening here the energy has just been flowing um and it's been flowing right off the, uh, right off the clock because we're almost done with the hour but uh we, we can't finish the hour because we have to do a couple things first of all for somebody who wants to work with Slenda wilson you know, they like what you're, they're hearing. They think this is somebody I think I could I, I could see myself working with as a coach. How do they find you? How do they reach out to you? Yes. Yeah, so you can find me. Um, you can email me at clarity at Celinda Wilson dot com. So just how it's spelled on the screen there. So clarity at Celinda Wilson dot com. You can also call me. <laughs> uh, my business phone is two, five, three, nine, five, one, nine, four, one, seven. Okay. Uh, and you can also reach me through my, my website, which is just www.celindawilson.com. So there's, there's a lot of ways to, to get a hold of me and I'm happy to reach out or speak to anybody who wants to talk to me. I love that email address. Yeah. Clarity at celindawilson.com. Yeah. Dang. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think everyone should have an email address. That's just their name. Yeah. <laughs> Every moment, just to say here, world, here I am. This is who I am. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody should have that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <Teason.com>. <laughs> I'm loving it. I am just loving it. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been wonderful. Uh, one thing that I do need to tell to you, and this is something that I make a regular practice of doing here on the show, yeah. because I think it's very, very important. Um, but uh, you, uh, like so many people who have come onto the show, you are totally a giver. You just love to give and you love absolutely. to help people. That's absolutely. Absolutely. And you've given many, you're, you're starting a new path. You're, you're giving through podcasts, but you've also yeah. been giving through your teachings because you were yeah. a professor for some time and, and through your writings and so forth. And, and there are many people. Hmm? And her energy. And her Thank energy. You. Oh, God, <laughs> yes. No doubt about that. Thanks. Um, but there, there are many people that you'll, you'll never meet and you'll never see who mm-hmm. received that and who benefited from it. And like I said, you never heard about it. You never heard from them. You don't, never met them. You never saw them. You don't know. Yeah. I think it's important to recognize that. So on behalf of those people you've never met and you've never seen, thank you for what you've been doing and what you're oh. continuing to do because it's Absolutely. making a huge difference in this life. Wonderful. Happy to help. Always happy to help. Yeah, that's a yeah. great idea. Always happy yeah. to help. I love that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm always grateful when I get to, to listen to and talk with my friend Neil because, man, the stuff that comes out of your mouth <laughs> just, is just mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to all first responders in the military. Absolutely. Thank Wonderful. you guys very much. Thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, All right. Everybody. Thank you.